Two down, one to go in the 2024 Triple Crown. Preakness Stakes in the rear view. Belmont Stakes coming up in a few weeks, but before that. And don't forget, we won't be at Belmont, so that is a major difference. The asterisk that we have talked about, but that is going to be in a few weeks' time. Let's recap quickly what happened at the Preakness, and we have two races coming up at Santa Anita as I welcome in our two top analysts here on the channel for Thoroughbred Horse Racing, John Hardoon from the Rigas and Sheets. How's it going, John? Good, good, good. By the way, the Belmont at Saratoga is really shaping up to be a terrific race. You got some really good horses, Fierceness, uh, Sierra Leone. Look at you. Uh, it's a really nice horse in Fierceness. You're coming around? <laughs> well, because it's, no. it, 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 this is the time he's supposed to see? move forward, right? Yes. Isn't it? This is the inconsistent good race that's coming up. Right. You have Muth. So has have we been wrong yet? No. no. Good race, bad race, good race, bad race, <laughs> bad race. Time for the good race. I yeah, mean, it's you... going to be a terrific betting race. I don't remember a Belmont, uh, you know, with this much interest in it since there was a shot at Triple Crowns. Other than that, this is the best Belmont I've seen in a long time. I don't know. Maybe yeah. I'm wrong. Will and you go? No, it's they won't let me in. Look, they won't it. let me in. They won't let me in with an owner's bitch, okay? Wow. If you think I'm paying to get in, they're <laughs> crazy. Okay. So that's coming up in a few weeks. We still have a little bit of time to get ready. But when will we know? When will the uh, final? Uh, yeah. Probably know, the Monday before. Oh, like so we still have time. Okay. Yeah. All right. So last week the preakness uh dud of a race uh what what, what is your uh, overall analysis there uh john a lot of people had excuses the track was a mess they were sealing it unsealing it certain horses obviously didn't take to it and uh you know the fact that uh, the baffert horse was done after half a mile well that kind of left lucas you know home free i guess no one no one really ran nobody showed up and the horse that I liked and the Chad liked a little, the Chad Brown horse, totally eliminated at the start. The uh, the other Lucas horse smashed into him. And by the oh, way, the ups, nice. and, the ups and downs of the game. Lucas won the race, and then in the same race, a horse, the other horse he had just steal uh, broke down and had a condyla fracture. But he'll be okay from oh, what I hear. That's good to hear. So, yeah. Chad, what did you think about Seize the Gray? Uh, he was good when he broke his beat in the slop for whatever it's worth. When he broke his maiden in the slop in Saratoga, he was good. We ran against him that day. Yeah. Um, that ironically enough, Dornock was in that race as well. Uh, well Dornock, look, Dornock uh, will be in the in the Belmont also. They announced that this morning. So there you go, another one. Um, I think I was I was happy for for the kid. I, I've known Torres for uh, for a little while now. The jockey, he's. Uh, He's a good young rider. He kind of got uh, handed to him over here when they tried to give him a 60-day suspension for nothing. It was all kind of BS, uh, but that's in the rear view at this point. Uh, it's interesting to see where he goes. He was kind of – he was a jock without a place to go this summer. Um, he, he went to fairgrounds this winter, just trying to find somewhere to, to kind of lay down his roots. He's a young jockey who just lost his uh, his apprenticeship. Uh, Liz Mars has him now. She does a good job in, in Kentucky. Uh, he, he toyed with maybe going to Monmouth or, or coming back to New York, and uh, I think he's going to stay now in Kentucky. So, you know, whether he follows uh, Lucas to, to Saratoga for the summer, I guess TBD. Um, but look, I mean, and, and props to, to Lucas. Um, somebody I read somewhere online the other day, they said the last dance that Lucas missed was his junior prom. I thought that was a, <laughs> a pretty good one. That was a pretty good one. That is a good one. Seize the gray. Uh, missed his opportunity for the Derby after not really – producing much in the Jeff I'll Ruby. I'll Listen, I'll tell you I'll tell you this though. I uh, credit credit to Mystic Dan. He showed up, he ran his yeah. race. He ran a really really good race. I, I thought, you know, all things considered back in the two weeks which we thought maybe it was going to compromise him a little bit like it did last year. Uh, but Kenny did a great job. Ryan gave him another uh, a really good ride. I I do kind of stick to my point though. I think he'd like to stay on the rail. He was moving very comfortably on the rail and when he tipped out he, not that he kind of went into neutral, but I, I he just, looked like he was going to get him for a minute there. For I, a second, think, it looked like he was going to get him. I think his acceleration points come when he's hugging the, the, the rail. So that's something to just kind of look at down the road. I don't think he'll run to the Belmont. Um, maybe a race like the Matt Wynn, which could end up being a really, really good race as well at the end of June. 
Um, or, just wait, or just wait for a race like the Haskell, which, you know, would kind of sit, kind of suit him. So I will see what Kenny McPeak does with, uh, with Mystic Dan, but, but, but credit to him. I, I thought he ran a, a good race and nobody's really talked too much about that. So, um, you know, it, it's not an easy thing to do to come back in two weeks and he did it. And, and, and for all of those people who talk about, we got to change the date of the Preakness to change the date no, of the Belmont, no. the horses that were first, second, and third all ran on Kentucky Derby Day. That's right. That, all three horses came back on two weeks, so you oh. knew I had no shot when that happened. <laughs> but but it, listen, I, I'm just I'm I, I'm I'm very much a pundit of just keep things the way they are. It, it, the Triple Crown's not supposed to be easy to win. Okay. Exactly. I agree. You talking you talking about seize the gray in the Derby? He's a great. Seize the gray the went on yeah. Derby Day. He ran in he ran in the in the Pat Day yeah. Mile, which was the same card as the Kentucky Derby. Yeah, and and again. This is a horse that did nothing in the Jeff Ruby, finished third, finished seventh in the Bluegrass, I guess couldn't get into the Derby, and then runs in that day race, wins that one, and then wins the uh, Preakness. So there you go. All right. Um, by the way, your three-race win streak, the, uh, the the last of the three ended with your win, Chad, Chad in the uh, Black-Eyed Susan with Gunsong. So Gunsong. Yeah, well, well, he gave that out. I had she that exact, good. and he gave out the winner and exact. The check. Look, she was she was good. She was good on the day. Uh, it'll be interesting to see if she runs back in the Acorn in three weeks. It's back a little quick uh, for a filly, uh, and uh, we'll see. There, there, there's the Torpedo Anna. Just FYI, um, you know, there, it looks like that race might be good. If you if you add Gunsong into that mix, it'll be uh, it'll be very very interesting to see. And there's some some new shooters in the Belmont, which we'll talk about when we get closer. Um, some really, really well pedigreed horses, lightly raced on experience, but uh, they'll add a little uh, razzle dazzle to the race when we get there. And by the way, our picks in that race were five, Chad, John, seven. I went with four. And the finishing result five, seven, and four. That was there you funny. go. Okay. Like so, silver bronze here. Yeah, that's me. Okay, so let's go with the Santa Anita races. We don't do Santa Anita a whole lot, and that's normally because they don't have a lot of uh, – the, the fields aren't very strong and usually aren't very big. So uh, we, we, we got big fields, not strong, but big ones. Uh, so we're taking advantage of it. Uh, we've got races 6 and 10 at Santa Anita we're going to talk about. Uh, neither are graded stakes races, but one is a stakes race. That is the 6th. And then the 10th we're going to talk about – uh, that's a six and a half furlong race on uh, hillside turf. So uh, we're going to start first with the sixth, of course. By so, the way, by the way, Greg, these are this is a big day for cow cow bred horses. These are all these are stake races for all cal California bred horses. So that's why you're getting the full fields, the big purses, ah. the horses showed up. Okay. And the star the star of the show. We're not going to talk about the race, but it is the third race with the chosen Braun. Who's uh, two to five? He's a freak. He's a freak. He's a cow bred freak. He's seventeen for twenty-two lifetime. Uh, he, he's morning line two to five, and he's going to get beat. But oh, that's, that's what? Not there, he's going to get beat by, by big city lights. But let's talk about the six and ten. Oh, wait, wait, wait I, I got to write this down. So race three, the three will win. Okay, excellent. Yes, the chosen Vron. I'm seeing a little that. small upset here. I think Big City Lights is going to beat uh, the chosen Vron, but let's see what happens. And, All right, and and well, you got me curious. What a nice horse he is, though. The only race he lost, I think, was the Breeders' Cup sprint in his last leg. Yeah, just taking a quick look at his sheet numbers: four, four, and six this year. And your horse that you just mentioned has an eight and a six this year. So yeah, but the chosen Vron could go backwards off the fours, and Chad's horse only has to run a six, and then he could beat him. Okay. Close. Well, that's Very a good close. one. So yeah, all right. Chad's so, giving you a live one. Kicking off with a bonus upset. Let's see what happens. Now we move on to the sixth, and that is uh, again. This is the. This is going to be one of those. Uh, this is actually a hundred thousand dollar race, uh, the Franz Valentine Stakes. So this should go off about quarter to seven ish on Saturday. Uh, the morning line favorite is the outside post, the 11. Stay and scam. So this is a... I got to ask you guys a, a, a trivia question. This is not a trivia question. This is your... Maybe it is. Uh, Doug O'Neill, Mario Gutierrez. Every time you see Mario Gutierrez ride at Santa Anita, it's with Doug O'Neill. So uh, what is the best... No, no, horse? no. No. Every time he rides for Doug O'Neill, it's a Paul Redham horse. He's, him and Redham are very tight. 
Okay. It has nothing to do. It's more uh, Redham than Redham than is the owner. Yes. Okay. I wouldn't say it's more. I'd say it's all. <laughs> yeah. Well, there's actually a race. You can see that tomorrow is Saturday where he's not riding a Redham horse in a race, which I found amazing. But I don't know where it was. I was doing the work. I think it's tomorrow. So my question was going to be, do you remember the best horse from that combo? I'm not, Again, I don't know. I'm just asking yeah. you. I'll Nike. have a number. Nyquist. Nyquist is the best word. Oh, Nyquist. Okay, yeah. Nyquist. They won, two Kentucky, they won two Kentucky Derbies together, and as a reward, um, the assistant for Doug O'Neill got a got a brand new car each time they won the Derby. Actually, he just sold, he just sold it. And uh, they got a horse named Blame the Jockey. <laughs> okay. That'll work. All right. Let's uh, take a look at this field. Uh, first of all, uh, and we're just we're, we're not going to go through the entire field. Uh, let's just start with the morning line favorite, Stay in Scam. And uh, this horse uh, this year has run between a 10 and a 15. 15 with a couple of starts ago. 13 was the last time out. Uh, overall, though, 7 out of 7 in the money at Santa Anita for the career with 2 wins. And 9 out of 9 in the money on turf with 4 wins. Well, the problem with this horse is she's breaking from the 11 post. And you have horses that are inside that could run the same 13s that she could run. So I think she's outposted. I would use her with the horse I'm king, but I wouldn't key off of her since she's going to be the favorite or close to it. Well, look, I mean, the reason she's going to be the favorite is fairly obvious, right? She won the Calbred race three starts back, and she's been yeah. holding her own against Open Stakes Company, right? The, a lot of these horses are fringe stake horses. They're really, you know, if it's none of these horses, I would say, in this race besides Stay and Scam are really state quality horses, right? They're running because it's a cow bred race with a nice purse. Right. So so on from a class standpoint, Stan Scam's clearly the horse to beat. You're right though, the post is, is the ultimate kind of uh you know line Equalizer. in the sky. But but I think a mile a mile's okay for her. It's about as far as she wants to go, but a mile's okay for her. Um some of these other ones are kinda all over the place. Like I I wanted to try and make a case for the eight horse Medaha, and she's she's gone anywhere from a, a thousand a thousand yards to a mile and an eighth, and I'm not really sure which one she wants to do. Yeah, well, yeah, the sheets on uh, the sheet numbers on Medaha, uh, a couple of sixteens and a fourteen and a thirteen, so headed in the right direction. Last race though was a fifteen, so um, what about that horse, John? I think she's a little slow. Again, she's only five to one. You have horses like the three, uh, Abitha, even the five. She's misbehaving. The seven, they're all much, much longer, and they're faster. So that's why I avoided the eight. Yeah, the couple of horses uh, that you just – how about you've got um, Sneaker, the four, and she's misbehaving, the five, 12 to one, 20 to one. Um, uh, are we dealing though with? I mean, if you take a look at she's misbehaving. She ran at thirteen, then bounced to a twenty-two. And now he's on another thirteen. Um, yeah, but she's twenty but to one. She's twenty, at 20 to one. To one you you yes. don't guess. You know, you, you throw her in, and that's it. And sneaker but, ran a fifteen last time out. Uh, could be concerned about a little bit of bounce there. What about Abita, the three horse? This horse had major trouble last time out. Unfortunately, everyone saw it, so she's going to be a lot shorter than 10 to 1. And I think she gets a negative rider switch. Hector Barrios rides that turf course as good as anyone else. I don't think he's there Saturday because he's not riding in the race. You know, I'm seriously interested in that horse and the seven horse, Cornelia Fort. I mean, what's wrong with these horses? I mean, the one thing about Sneaker, look, I think she's a filly on the rise, but she's just a three-year-old, and she's taking on the older horses. But uh, because she's a three-year-old running against older horses, there's a big weight gap. And so she's getting um, eight pounds, up to 12 pounds from some of these horses uh, in the race. I mean, that's that's a large that's a large difference in weight class. Her and Moment's Pleasure, the nine horses, three-year-olds, get a large, large weight break here, which... It, uh, everybody has kind of different feelings on that. I know in Europe that's a big, big deal. And that's a lot of weight difference there, John. Yeah, it certainly is. But, again, it's a three-year-old, you know, it may be a little what, early. What was the thing – what's the thing on sheets? Isn't there something on the sheets that they get – they they lose points or, or the other horses get points because they're carrying more weight? Or is it is weight – weight is a factor in how they make the number on the sheets, right? It's a major factor. It's one of the key components. Okay. Absolutely. So, so so that being said, we are big believers in weight. No question. 
do you look twice then when you see a horse getting a 10 12 pound weight break yeah you give them a point and a half credit for it so if okay. you think they're going to run an 18 they're really going to run a 16 and a half okay so that's, that's, being, that's, that's, a big, yeah. that's a big deal yeah, wow. unless you need a 13 and you're running 18. <laughs> and you need more than a point and a half, I guess. Okay. Well, what we got to take out one of the lead pads. Okay. Uh, what about the tw the uh, nine, Moments Pleasure? Now, I know that the sheet numbers uh, aren't strong. 18 best last race, but best uh, better in each of the four races, including the three on turf, and has the really good combo in this race, uh, Berrios and Lewis. Oh, here's Hector Berrios. He, he got off the three to ride the nine. Huh. That's He made a mistake. I hate to inform him. I don't know. I guess he, he agrees with you. He must think he's improving. He's lightly raced, only four starts. I guess she could get better, but I'm looking at numbers. And the numbers, to me, she's slow. Yeah, this is one of those races, though, that you can actually, because you're looking at horses that have gone from 19 to 13 and from 18 to 14. Now you got to guess yeah. that it's going to be the right race, that it's going to happen. But, and you don't know that it'll ever happen. It happened to those horses, but you can't guarantee it. I mean, you know, you could you could assume that they're getting better. You're going to see improvement or they ran well as a two year old. So naturally, they're going to come back better as a three year old. But you're only assuming it. You don't. Know, it's not a fact till it's done. So. Uh, uh, Chad, what about the horse? There's two horses. Go ahead. There's two horses in here. I want I want to kind of pick John's brain about here because it's kind of interesting to me. And that's the. Uh, the number 10 horse, Rose Dawson, and the number one horse, uh, Carmen Miranda. Now, if you notice, uh, Carmen Miranda was claimed last time out of the race from Phil D'Amato and Nick Alexander. And look, Nick Alexander's probably, and I might get some flack for this from Harris Farm and some of the others, I think Nick Alexander's the best breeder in California. Year after year, he's got quality horses, cowbreds. Uh, I agree with you. And, and, and so they ran this filly for 80, and knowing that this race was coming up, okay? And my thought process is one of two things. One, they probably didn't think that a five-year-old daughter of Stanford was going to get claimed for the 80, okay? For which 80, is <laughs> it's also a plausible uh, explanation, right? But, I mean, Hirana's racing and John Sadler take a, take a chance. Surprisingly, they're just 12% off the claim. But, but I mean, obviously a good claim knowing that this race was, was coming. I, obviously, you had this filly. You had to expect that she was going to run in this race. Um, or do you look at it the other way and you say, well, she could run for the 80, because we have Rose Dawson, and we think Rose Dawson is is better suited to the the more distance, and, and we think that she can improve off these last couple races going further. Her grass races are sneaky okay. Um, what do you think? You think they just got caught kind of cheating, you know, on on running for the eighty, or do you think that Rose Dawson maybe is the up and comer here? Uh, probably a little of both. I don't think that they thought Carmen Miranda was going to go maybe a mile because if you look, she's okay. been a distance of ground how many times? Two out of the 18 times she's ever run? Okay. You know, that's just, I don't know. But Rose Dawson's only been long twice also, so I don't know. I think Rose Dawson is a better horse personally. Okay. Not easy claiming from D'Amato, even if it is John Sadler. It's still, you know, it's just not easy claiming from him. No, I was just I was just curious. I thought it was interesting. Like I said, I mean, you don't you don't see a lot of eighty thousand dollar claims um, in general, you know, and especially when this race was the obvious target for. If she didn't get claimed, I I would imagine I I would probably would have won both had, probably. Yeah, she didn't probably get claimed didn't. that Phil Demata would have run both these horses. Yeah. So. Is is Jack Dawson in another race? Jack Dawson? Yeah. No, there is no Jack Dawson. Come on, you didn't get that? There is no. Jack Dawson. I missed it. It went right over my head. <laughs> Titanic reference. Oh, okay. Pirates of the Caribbean. All right. So, who do you like, John? I like the seven the best. Uh, Cornelia Ford, only because of the price, and uh, she's ten to one. She's getting better, and uh, Ian Krujak not having a great meet, only one for twenty-five. Wow. However. I think the source is going to outrun at Harrods. I would use the seven and exact is with the three, Abita, the five, she's misbehaving, and the 11, stay in scam. Seven with three, five, 11, and reverse them as well. Chad, you're up. I'm just going to go with class uh, Class prevails here. I'm going to go with the 11, stay in scam. Uh, but I'm going to try and get a price underneath. I'm going to use the 10, uh, Rose Dawson, and the eight, Madiha. Uh, the five to one and ten to one shots, and hope that maybe we can get a little bit lucky here. And if you want the weight break, um, I don't mind taking a shot on sneaker, taking the weight, you know, having the weight off 
hanging around for a piece there at the end, you know, with the with if Kyle Frey can do one fourteen, which I'm not really sure he can even do one fourteen. Uh, but if he can do one fourteen, if if the jock is overweight, I, I I rescind my pick on the uh, on the course. I don't think anyone in California does one fourteen. To be honest with you, but well, that's because that's because Doug and Nelson owns the Little Caesars. You know, that's it's easy, easy, easy access. Save a save a taco, eat a pizza. What are you going with, Greg? I'm gonna do. I'm going with the nine. I'm gonna take the nine moments pleasure. I'm taking the the, the big combo trainer jock deal in this race. And I'm gonna go. Uh, I'm gonna go under the uh, three, four, five, and eleven. I'm not sure what stats you have, by the way. I have them as one for eighteen together over the last two years. <laughs> oh, really? That combo has not done well lately. The the only race they won in the last two years was on April sixth with Moments Pleasure breaking your mate. <laughs> oh, there you go. That's a good sign. Counts. No, I'm I'm, yeah. not, I'm not going with the. Co- I, I, I'd like to see your stats, by the way. Where are you getting those stats? I like. I need those. No, I was just going with the fact that it's the best jockey stats and the best trainer stats. That's all. Uh, daily racing. Oh, really? They have all that for free? Well, you have to pay for it, but yes. Oh, that's okay, still, where are we bad. going? Next we'll take a look at it. Tenth race, I guess, right? Yep, let's go to the race number 10. And this is uh, the six and a half furlongs. This is the turf hillside race. Should go off about close to quarter to nine on Saturday. The 10 is the morning line favorite. So another outside post morning line favorite here for us. That's left-hand man, a 7-2 shot. You got Glatt having a big-time meet at 27% coming off a 10. Uh, and the second win. And five starts for left-hand man. What about the 10, John? The 10? The 10 is fine, but it looks like he's bad. His grass race, what did he run on the grass? This is on the turf. Are you aware? Yeah, that's it. Yeah, one oh. race on the turf. Yep. And what was it? 17. So why do I want to bet him at 7-2? to two? Uh, I don't, I don't we like wouldn't. him best of the two Mark Glad horses. I prefer the other Mark Glad horse over him. I, I would I, I, I would rather take a shot on Layla's, Layla's candy yes. than I would on, on left-hand man, to be honest with you, and just as far as the Mark Glad is concerned. Yeah, she, look, Leia's candy, John, is doing another fierceness. Not even close. I agree 100%. It's not even close. Up and down, Leia's candy, 12 to 24, 12 to 17, and that means another good one this one this time. Yeah, and then you have Eddie's last, the Doug O'Neill horse, Paul Red and Mar- Mario Gutierrez, you were just talking about. <laughs> there you about. go. I mean, uh, this horse is fast. Yes. Lemon Sushi is fast. You yes. have some fast horses in this yep. race. Yeah, this And one. by the way, Eddie's last has won down the hill, and that's very important. Some horses like it. Some horses don't. This horse likes it. So, I mean, right, he has so a you, watch, you watch a lot more California racing than me, John. You spend a lot of time out there, okay? How do, how do you know, and, and this question really pertains to the outside horse who's going to be my top pick here, our Bucky Charm. How do you know or, or guesstimate if you think they're going to like the downhill turf course? Well, first of all, horses that cut back in distance automatically move up on it. It's a general rule. Eight out of ten of them, if you're cutting back in distance, you run better than you did last time. That's the first and most important key to right, betting races one. down the hill. Uh, you're, uh, the problem with your horse is he's five years old and only has one start coming Look, in. And the, and the field he beat was eh at best. I know, to be I know the field was bad, but he's a fast horse. He's got the he outside. Was, he was really good, but he's never been on grass. He's never been nothing, this distance, and he's five nothing, years old. Nothing, nothing. But I, I do think in the in the downhill turf course, the outside post, and I know we talked about the outside it's post. It's 100 but, times better than the inside post. Right. Down because, the hill, you want to be drawn outside, not inside, because you have right. to check going into the first turn. So I just, I just feel like with the speed that this horse has, he looks like he's the fastest horse. I He's going to be in like, front until they hit the dirt. Then watch what happens when they cross over the well, dirt. Maybe he, he gets excited that, about he, being back on the dirt. He's, he may <laughs> get a shock and not really what. Yeah, um, I don't know. I don't know. I just I. He, it's to, for me. He's interesting. And, and Chad, be honest. Honestly, I mean, yeah. at four to one, you're not. You you don't get any. You, this isn't a bargain for you. At four to one, you could do better than this. Well, I mean, I look, just, he broke his mate and he was two to five. Yeah, I know. <laughs> okay. I, I, I mean, I, I don't know. Like, it's just, it's an interesting move. I mean, you would think the logical would, decision would be to just run him back on the dirt. He did nothing wrong. And even if he beat a nothing field, he did nothing wrong in that first race. So my only thing is, you know, maybe this Mike Pipe, he's got a little bit of an idea, even though his numbers are terrible. First time turf, uh, dirt to turf. He, his numbers look like me on the grass. 
I'll uh, tell you one thing. He's having a terrific meet. He really is. I think he's hitting at about 20%. He's been dead prior to this meet for a while, but his horses are all running. Look at you Hernandez. Know, I, Hernandez. And Hernandez, Hernandez takes the mount. So why not? Yeah, I, I just, I, like I said, I understand what you're saying, that four to one's not a gift, but it's also not, it's also not, you know, nothing. Four to one's a, a solid, a solid number here. Yeah, I, but I, when you're doing something for the first time against real horses, these are real horses. You know, you have okay. horses here that can run nine, ten. You okay. would have to improve. But listen, why not? He's lightly raced. Maybe they found something. And you got a good combo there. You got Hernandez yeah. and how do you pronounce it? And name? Chad's been Pipey? on fire. So Puppy? who's going to argue with Chad? Pipe pup. How's the trainer's last name? Pipey. 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 Pipe. Okay. By the way, look at this because uh, the sheet line on both this five lemon sushi and the nine Eddie's last. So they're both six to one, which is also kind of funny. But check out the sheet, the line differences, John. You've got nine, 13, 14, and then Eddie's last nine, 13, 14. So they got a similar path. They're both six to one, and I like the fact that they're both coming off nines. Uh, and it wasn't that, you know, it was April nineteenth, so it's not that bad. I think those are two of the better horses to look at. Yeah, and guess what? They're coming out of the same race, so the, the wow. coming out of the same race, and they were what a half a length apart at the finish. So. Crazy. Uh, but, hey, where where do you see the hillside, John, on the daily form? Say again. When it's a hillside turf race, where do you pick that up on the form? You see, it said that it'll say six and a half furlongs the distance, and it will have an asterisk next to it. Like, look at rhythm on stage. The the two horse, you see the race two starts back. It says six and a oh, half that furlongs. Oh, little asterisk. Okay. Yeah, there's a little asterisk. The asterisk there indicates that it was down the hillside turf. Okay. So really, it's a little misleading because it shows you Eddie Last is one for three at the distance, but the distance that that he actually won at two starts back was not down the hill. It was yeah. six and a half furlongs flat. So I was wrong when I said that he won down the hill in the past. He didn't. That race was at the flat. So I don't even know if he's been down the hill to tell you the truth. I don't see it. Uh, what okay. about uh, Moon Ice? The seven is a six to one shot coming off a uh, 13. And that was the first race with the new trainer, Richard Baltus. And that was right. a new top by two. Yeah, well, I mean, he's similar to Leas Candy, who's also 5-1, to one, who's coming off of a 13. He's like other horses. He's like Left Hand Man, who I guess you could say could run a 13 if you think his race is in line. I don't know. He's in the second tier to me. Carla Gaines is not having a good I know. I know meet. one thing. Stella got her groove back. Richard Baltus, he, he struggled a bit when he came back from his six-month suspension, nine-month suspension, but he's 5-15 for 15 at the current Santa Anita meet, so... Yeah, he won another race, I think, on Sunday. So I think the stats are even a little better than that. Yeah, he's just he's, yeah. Uh, he's picked it up. I mean, that's good because uh, his wife owns the kitchen, so maybe we can get some uh, some snacks over there. Yes, yeah. she does. Okay, Stella. Stella. Shout out there to Debbie. Not a lot of podcasts going to give a shout out to Debbie in the kitchen. <laughs> Only here, all here on the, uh, the Horse Racing Power Sports Network. Here we give a shout out to Richard Baltus' wife in the yep. kitchen. In the kitchen. Richard's <laughs> got his. <laughs> Bolt is back. Okay, so who do you like, John? I'm going to go with the nine, Eddie's last, the uh, Doug O'Neill horse. I'm going to play exact is with the five, Lemon Sushi, the six, Leah's Candy, and the ten, Left Hand Man. First and second, nine with five, six, and ten. Chad, you're up. I'm going to take our, uh, the eleven, our Bucky's Charm, but I'm going to use your same horses underneath. I like the five, Lemon Sushi, the six, Leah's Candy um, in that in that second spot. And, and I'll just I'll take a little bit of a a little bit of a swing here, um, also on the number four horse, Uncle John, at a price. Uncle John, and why is that? Because he's just, got a feeling. I, I just got a good feeling. I think the horse is going to run a big race here. You're up, uh, Greg. All right, I'm going to go. With, I'm actually taking the five over the nine. So you're reversing my. I'm going to reverse right? it. And I'm going to go oh, ahead. Is, and, I'm, I'm doubling down now. I'm doubling down on my list. Well, you've got the nine and the five in your exactus. So no, no, no nine, no nine. Eleven over five. He gave I, Chad was eleven over four, five, six. Four, you were five nine. Five, I was nine with five, six. six and you're over nine. Go ahead, John. Nine over. 
Nine over five, six, ten, and reverse them. There's room. All right. That'll do it next week. All right, guys. It looks like we're going to be doing Churchill. So All right. stay Whatever. tuned for that. Thank Thanks, guys. You. See you. Bye, Chad. See you. Bye, Greg. Take Thank care. You. Also want to remind everybody uh, to subscribe, share, and like. And uh, let us know if you have any races that you would like us to handicap. Just uh, we, we, we put it out there last week. Uh, I think we actually did it early in the show. So I figure, well, let's do it late in the show, even though earlier is supposed to be better. Anyway, if you have a race that you would like us to handicap, let us know. Pick it. Tell us. Exact. Say, I want Churchill, race, whatever. You can don't even, and it doesn't have to be Churchill. Again, I'm just assuming we're doing Churchill next week because we've already looked at it and they've got, I believe, four grade threes next week. And Santa, Santa Anita does have a couple of graded stakes races. And if they have good fields, then it's very possible doing Santa Anita too. So check out, uh, and look, it doesn't have to be Santa Anita either. Just if you have a racetrack or a race that you would like us to uh, handicap, we will do it. Uh, whether or not it winds up being a race that we break down for 15 minutes uh, or John and Chad just give you their picks. Uh, let us know uh, what you want us to analyze or uh, and or of course uh, make selections for it and we'll go ahead and take that, take uh, take care of that for you. All right and uh, as of right now it's all uh, Patreon uh, again until we reach a thousand subscribers on YouTube it's all Patreon five dollars a month. So check that out. Five dollars a month Patreon. We have a link in the description, and otherwise, the other races are going to be available on YouTube as usual moving forward, just like uh, normal. Of course, it's not a big Triple Crown race this week, so we're not pumping out the race uh, for free on YouTube early in the week like we've done two of the last three weeks. We'll do it again with Belmont Stakes Week, uh, but uh, we're back to our normal format uh, with the horsepower psn youtube channel and patreon so let us know questions comments anything at all regarding uh, how to sign up at patreon anything at all let us know uh, or just anything you know if you have a question or a comment regarding races horses owners trainers whatever uh, go ahead and share that with us you can do that either at patreon in the comment section or on youtube and uh, that's going to wrap it up so appreciate it we'll see you next time